What's up, suckers? Before we begin this podcast, I want to let you know that we got a show out on Netflix. If you haven't watched it already, check it out right now. Chad and JT go deep on Netflix. It's going to be a good time. Check it out. We also have tour dates coming up. Um, we're going everywhere. We're going to Denver, Boston. Honolulu is coming up. I believe by the time this comes out, this will be we'll be in Honolulu. So check us out in Honolulu. Um, <clears throat> Nashville, Chicago. Where else are we going to be? Uh, Atlanta. We got new Atlanta dates. New York is coming out. The ticket links aren't up for New York yet, but they will be out soon. We're also brought to you by the legends at Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pube, for looking after our hogs, for making our dinks look fresh and clean because smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. And if you haven't been scaping for the summer, Son, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky pubes. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GoDeepAtManscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code GoDeepAtManscaped.com. Keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer and enter fresh ball fall. We're also brought to you by the legends at Athletic Greens. What up, Athletic Greens? Thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. You guys are legends. I love Athletic Greens. It's your one... It's You have all the nutrition, vitamins, and minerals you need in one scoop. You can drink it every day. It tastes good. It's got everything you need. Because life is busy and your well-being is important. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash go deep for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. All right, let's start the show. All right, let's cure the salami and let's pinch the nipples. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Thomas. What up? Boom clap, Stokers. We're here with the, uh, I didn't think of one, but we're here with the, the Duke, oh, I already did Duke of Dart, <laughs> the, the Colonel of Cunnilingus. Yes. Strider Wilson. And we are here with the, with the, uh, with the Lord of Leisure. Chris Parr. What's up? What's up, dude? <laughs> How's it going? That is the perfect thing. He's like, very relaxed. Hey, what's yeah. up, dude? What up? All right, boys. Well, we're drafting today. Yes, sir. We've got a cool one today. We're doing our top movie dads of all time. Jump one, 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 so the one, best one, dads, one, one, however you define that, all time. Some quick parameters. We talked about it on the golf course. I don't think you guys were privy to it, though. Nice. We're already getting juiced, Chris. <laughs> well, I'm I'm really only talking to you, Strider. You know I want to bet. You know I'm going to pick Uncle Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. All right, let's leave it all open then. You can do whatever you wait, want. Wait, wait, but what were you going to say? What are the supremacy? I was going to say like maybe just dads and stepdads, but I don't want to stop you from doing you. Oh, freak. Whoa, even stepdads. Whoa. If you want to do like surrogate fathers or like Splinter and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something <laughs> like that, <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Go crazy. I think it adds to the conversation. Just patriarchs, dude. He's a yeah. patriarch. Do you understand? Yeah, I got to be open to it, baby. <laughs> whatever it is, it is. All right. Should we shoot some odds or evens? Let's go. All right. One, two, three. Shoot. Oh, oh tits Chad with McGee. the fourth hitter. Um, Fuck. Or Dick McGee. One, two, three, shoot. Um, oh. Wait, am I going to get the number one pick for like dude, the I want fifth draft? Oh, yeah, I want number oh, one, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I want number right. one. I want number one on this shoot. one, man. All right, here we go. Paper, rock, scissors, fucking shoot. It, Paper, <laughs> rock, scissors, shoot. Chris. Oh, no, JT. Oh, you got the number dude, one. Dude, number one again. Dude, I'm like really good. I mean, I mean who knows? Is it a skill? Yeah, I are think you it cheating? is. What's yeah, going I think on it is. Here, it's messed up, dude. What's Wait, but Chris has won how many in a row dude? now? Because you guys play the no. numbers. I play the guy. Um, you know what? I don't think anyone was going to go with my number one pick. No, dude, I got I got a strong number one, dude. It's I good it. I go number one because I'm not a big number. I know who you're going number one. Fuck. Baby, baby. I've been thinking about it. Um, All right, my number one pick. Oh, I know you're going. You know what? 
Oh, guys, can I take a second? No. No. Oh, you had it? You no. Said it. You can't tell us. Don't tease us, fellas. You can't fellas. Take a second, bro. Fellas, let's I was, breathe. I was, breathe. Well, I was going to tell you to take all the time you need, but then they. Yeah, no. no, no, no. We're horny. We're horny. You know what? Oh, I don't know if I'll get him on, on the other side. Nut, right? All right. Round one. Fight. Um, fucking edge us, dude. All right. I'm going to go with my number one pick. I'm going to go badass, dad. Nice. I'm going Harry Stamper and Armageddon. Fucking, oh, that's dude. a nice one, dude. Legend. Because look, he's not just a father to live, Tyler. He's a father to everyone. He's a father to the earth. You know what I mean? He's the one guy. What do you want from a dad? I mean, you want a sweet, in a real life, you want a sweet, loving man who provides and is understanding and is, you know, all the, all the ordinary virtues. But Harry has extraordinary virtues. He is brave and courageous, and he always gets the job done. I mean, just like, uh, what's, what's Affleck's name in it? AJ. Uh, AJ. AJ. Like, just like AJ says when the, when the, when Colonel Sharp's thinking about turning the ship around and AJ goes, look, he's not going to fail. He doesn't know how to fail. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave myself chills. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then, you know, he blows up the asteroid with like a second left. Last thing he says is I love you, Gracie. Yep, you know, he's a yep. sweet man. He's got a heart of gold, but he's just got that rough and tumble exterior. And I, I love a boneheaded American who gets the job done. And then at the end, Colonel Sharp comes down. I think I've said this before. This is what every dad oh, wants someone to say to their kid after they've passed permission to shake hands with the daughter of the bravest man I've ever met. I mean, bro, come on, bro. Dude, that line, dude. dude. Oh. And they're walking with their space suits with like the, the dong pocket or whatever. Mm -hmm. just swinging. You see AJ's just not that it pertains to Harry being a dad, but I just thought it was a cool deal. Yeah. Different point, but very yeah, well yeah. received. I, I <laughs> yeah. For their dicks, yeah. Right? Nice. They Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yes. How no. come they have like big dick sacks? <laughs> to piggyback on that, the drill factory is something that I've named after Harry Stamper. Oh, Cause you go oh. in there, you don't miss your mark. You, right. And that's the drill factory. Oh. And he he drills. I dude, dude, I literally thought when we did the dad draft there would be less dong talk, but I was naive no, no. in my yeah. Oh, we're talking yeah. No, dads, no, 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 baby. No, baby, come on. What's the first thing? You gotta have a dick to be a dad. Yeah. Dude. What's my first memory? My dad's Poor dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um also I, I weird weird theory, but like do we think Harry had sex after his lady passed away? I, I have a theory. I think, if I'm being honest, I think he did, but I think it was only with women of the night. I think he kept it purely transactional. Yes. Mm -hmm. no, never emotional. Yep. yep. Once she I, was gone, that part of him was gone. I think he just got blowjobs. Nice. That's it. That's true. Yeah. You know, all right, let's drill. Went to shore, you know, and didn't jack off. Just no. really saved up fat loads while he was out there, like three weeks at a time on the rig. Came in and just blasted, you know, at a strip club by the harbor. Dude, nice. and then he also says, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> me and Chad just really ran with this yeah, uh, yeah. appropriate guys, talk. You guys have obviously nice. thought about it a yeah, lot. That's good. Loads, <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, and also he says one thing, too, that every dad has got to say at some point. They're like, God damn it, I made a promise to my little girl. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to break that promise. Very nice. Chris, who you got with the second <laughs> pick? <laughs> Oh man, that's t I'm I'm th I almost want to go. Oh man, I wasn't. Exp I'm gonna go with Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. Nice. Whose name? Also, The Incredible. His name is Bob Parr. The, nice. The Pars, which is sick, amazing. That's right. Same spelling as that's fucking right. Us. Um. Also a badass, very strong dude. Uh, his proportions are hilarious. <laughs> it's also he's voiced by Craig T. Nelson, who just has like the most. He sounds so much such like a dad. Energy. You know, you see his, and he's just uh, they kind of try and make him like a you know Americana dad, but he just also happens to have superpowers, and it's just a great movie. And of the pars, I had to get it. Let's go, I love it, dude. That's great. Big <laughs> chest, bro. What do you Huge. think, uh, Mr. Yes. Incredible's dick? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about yeah, him and talk about... girl having sex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know if we got enough honest. time, dude. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm going. I, know I can't doing. risk it. And this is what I really want. It's my number one dad. I had an emotional reaction when I thought about this dad. Because you know, I think you guys know who I want to pick right now, but I got to pick this. No. It's dude. all heart. 
I know Lido who from Life is Beautiful. Hmm. Roberto. Oh, Benigni. nice. Dude, I've never seen it, but oh. a lot of people threw it out there as a, as a good dad pick. Bro, he's the best dad in the world. He's the best dad. And dude, that's a must watch movie. If you've never seen it, he's just like a straight up regular dude and he protects his son from the horrific world around him. He preserves the innocence. You know, that's the thing. He preserves the innocence in his, in his kid. And dude, you don't make it through that movie without crying, dude. Like, I don't care. You're getting waterworks. And dude, the performance is amazing by that guy. It's, it's one of the best movies of all time. Yeah, he won't let his son see the world as something other than beautiful. Beautiful, for and, lack of and, a better word. Yeah. yeah, in the most hate-filled environment. So yeah, dude, I mean, that's by far and away my number one. Nice. All right, I'm going to go with one of my favorite dad in movie. And, and really it's sort of a, a movie that it's probably one of my favorite movies when I was, you know, an adolescent. Very formative for me. Great comedy. I think he was for a while there. He was America's dad, Eugene Levy in American Pie. Oh, nice! Yeah. Great oh. pick. So understanding. Yeah. So understanding. You know, was kind of crossed the line, but he had a good heart. He was sincere. He just wanted to make sure that his son, you know, was getting laid, but being protected. And he's like, he even wanted to talk about masturbation. He was always there for him. Always there for Jim. Even in his darkest times, like when he super glued his hand to his dick. He's never judged him either. Never judged him. Mm-hmm. Uh, still hooked up with his mom. Uh, and I think, you know, he's just sort of, he's a fucking, he's a dork, but he was a great dad. And I think, I think I'd prefer to have a dorky great dad to a badass detached dad. For sure. I think Eugene Levy's, he's, he's a good guy. So, yeah. That's nice. my dad. Doing research, I found out his name in the movies, which isn't even. I prefer just knowing him as Jim's dad. Yeah, because that's all he is, and you know, I don't think they ever actually say it. What's his? I name? I don't know. If, I think it was Noah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> or something like that. He oh, looks yeah, like. Where I was like, that's a little too I don't know if record, I need yeah. that. You know what I mean? Because no. I was just like best movie dads, and obviously he was on there. Yeah. But, yeah. but I only know him as Jim's dad. Yeah. yeah. And he's so he's just a freaking chiller. Dude. What, what's what's Jim's last name in it? So I think it starts with an S. I don't remember. I, wrote, I actually wrote down. Oh, it's Mr. Livingston. Mr. Livingston. Yeah, yeah. Livingston. Yeah. And, and that's like, a um, cute little note collection. Thank you. Got you. There's all that, and I have. I put it in this pocket. I wore the shirt for this pocket. Also, shout out to Joe Pelzon for my shrooms shirt. You've been wearing that, dude. It looks good. I love this shirt. And you do shrooms now. You did little shrooms at the wedding this weekend. Thank right? you very much. Yes, I did. Ooh. Now that I have my Sherpas, and tr- I should have probably done one more. But still, it's fine. You're so. playing it safe. I like that, dude. You don't want to lose it out there. Exactly. It's a big, intense environment. You don't know how it's going to go. I did a lot. Um, <laughs> Chad, you got another pick. Round two, fight. Oh, I got another pick. Ooh. Back to back. Snake, baby. It's fantasy football season. We're snake um, drafting. Oh, I forgot my picks. Hmm. Oh, I mean, this is just, you got to go with this one. You gotta go with a badass. No. You gotta go with one who's gonna save his daughter. And fuck, 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 fuck. You know, yeah. he's gonna go to I any he's gonna go to any lengths. Yeah. He's gonna find the dude who took his daughter and he's gonna fuck him up. He lives by a very strict set of rules. What's what's the I need to look up the quote. But he's I like, a, I will I find you. Very specific skill set. A very specific skill, skill set. set. I will find you and I will kill you. Liam Neeson and taken. Yeah. I mean, dude, the guy kills six thousand Albanians. <laughs> Dude, also, it's the man. best part of that movie is when his former homeboy is kind of like turned on him and he's at dinner with that guy and his wife yeah. and Neeson gets pissed off, just shoots the wife in the leg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're like, right, savage. This, but because he's doing it for his daughter, yeah. you're like, good, good father, yes. good yeah. move. Um, yeah, I think, I think of the action ones, that might be the most iconic. And there's a lot of good ones, but it's so about getting her back. Mm-hmm. Yep, and you really feel like you could put anything in that guy's way, and he's gonna karate chop it till he gets to her. Yeah, <laughs> so fucking. And Neeson true. feels like a father. He has that energy. All oh, these guys. Totally. Bruce Willis probably, you know, is a dad, but doesn't have like a a a paternal energy to him necessarily. He's Craig just, T. Nelson does. Eugene Levy does. He's just a scrappy, straight up hero. Mm-hmm. Who just happens to have a little girl. But if he's your dad, dude, Harry's your dad. Fuck. Man. So true. Yeah, it's the legend. Strides, damn, dude, that's what I wanted. Which was actually bad drafting by me because I know I, it could have come around. But the, but there is one dad who, yeah, I, that's not who I thought you were gonna pick. Yeah. Oh no, I think I'm gonna get that later. I don't think you guys are gonna take him from me. 
Don't make me I'm do gonna it, get dude. It. If you take him from me, you can get. How can you say something? How can you bait me? Because like you know that? he's mine. Because yeah. he's mine. Yeah, I was. I was thinking. <laughs> dude, that. dibs. No, all right. <laughs> I gotta go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with. You know, I fucked up the rom com draft. I'm gonna go with uh, Steve Martin from Father of the Bride, dude. Oh, nice. great dad. Nice. Great dad. Funny. It's all about the father daughter relationship, but in a and he's a this is a very light hearted dad and uh you know he has a true arc comes around letting go of his little girl and uh just like a classic film like so so good and so many good laughs and good characters but steve martin dude the guy's the best yeah good dad good dad in a couple movies too yeah if yeah you, if we were just picking actors based off their like catalog of movies he would be probably up there because mm. of a few other but maybe those movies will come up so I, yeah, no, and he wasn't actually a dad. It's that's one of those weird ones where he plays a good dad, wasn't a dad. He's just been he's been so gray for so long. He's just a man dude, about town. Like dude, he's fun. almost like fourth decade of it, you know. So he's gonna be playing dads. Dude, fun fact: he almost went on a date with my mom. Really? Oh, yeah. what happened? Like, why did I don't go down? know, dude? But it was like fourth grade, and and I heard from my my buddy's mom that she's like you know your mom might go on a date with steve martin i was like fuck what? yeah let's Whoa. do it dude that'd be amazing and then it never transpired i don't know what happened but he was probably writing plays or he, something he yep. could have been in banjo practice he could have been my stepdad bro that would have been pretty cool dude that would have been rad yeah. your mom's really nice I met her the oh, yeah, 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 Steve yeah, Martin sweet. would have been really lucky that's right yeah, yeah he yeah. missed out oh dude yeah steve martin totally missed out big out. time very true chris defer all that. Oh, man. I'm going to go with Sean Connery in The Last Crusade. Nice. 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 Great dad. Yeah. He's kind of like an absent father, you know. Indy's got beef, but they have such great rapport, you know. He's not, he doesn't know how to handle it. He's out of his depth in this situation because he's, you know, it's an action movie. It's, and he's got to do all the fighting, but he comes up huge in that one scene where, with the birds to take down the plane, where he just goes, ooh, 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 and uses his umbrella and freaking take, because he's smart, you know? Uh, it's a lot of good comedy in that. They're, like I said, their chemistry is so good. And uh, it's my favorite Indiana Jones. I think that movie kicks ass. And he's just great to have it. Agreed. Dude, hell of a pick. I like how he's also a little bit competitive with Indy. And then we'll like, yeah, and it, yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. like when she's saying what a good lay Indy was, Sean thinks about him. And then like when Indy beats the shit out of guys, he's still being like, he's like, Oh, you, you're messing up. You know what I mean? Like he's never given him the, uh, the praise that, you know, Indy's really fighting for. Yeah. He's tough on him the whole way. And then, you know, he gets a little emotional, but then as soon as, you know, the mission's over. He's like back to razzing him and being like, "Ah, oh, you're a little dumbass sometimes. Let's hit it. And Sean Connery, another one who played a great dad and then in real life was a little bit of a wild card. Yeah. As if you watch any of his old interviews, he's uh, he's candid. <laughs> you gotta smack him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just gotta smack him a little bit. <laughs> smack him. Um, all right. Dude, I'm so psyched I got this guy. I thought he'd be gone by this point. I'm a... Uh, this was going to be my number one pick. Sean Connery was a dad. He was. Yeah, I'm sure he was dad many times over again, right? Just one? Unbelievable. I thought he was like a Clint Eastwood type. Or Marlon Brando. Those two guys got like 30 kids each. Nice. Whoa. Like if you were a flight attendant in the 70s, it was over. Clint Eastwood was going to lock it Dude, down. You know who else? Nick Cannon? He's got yeah. like 12 kids. Yeah. Yeah. He's, He's like, like, I got another on the way. Uh, hey, Nick, how about Wild and Pull Out, dude? <laughs> Oh, hey, Remarkable hey. accuracy You nailed that <laughs> I'm gonna go with, the Sorry. I, I'm gonna go with um, What's his name in the movie Mel Horowitz Is his name in the movie Dan Hedaya in Clueless Oh, oh yeah, yeah I love this guy dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. dude sleeper That's a good pick god damn For my money Fuck. The best dad Another widower um, tough, you know, you know, he's working hard, you know, he's going to provide, but just sweet at all the right moments. Like when Rudd is crushing on Cher and wants to follow her to the party and, and bail from the work sesh. And he's like, yeah, go to the party, have fun. And then he kind of smiles when he's in, but then also when the playboy kid Christian comes over and he's like, 
He's like, did Dean Martin's death, did Sammy Davis Jr.'s death make you think there was an empty spot in the Rat Pack or something yeah, like that? What's wrong with you, kids? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he's, and he's like, I got a, like a 30, he's like, I got a 357 revolver and a shovel and I don't think anybody will miss you. And then, <laughs> and then when Cher has her like, uh, you know, low point and she feels like she's just garbage and her self-esteem's in the gutter, the dad just gives her the fucking speech, pulls her right out of it. And then my favorite scene when he's super proud of her for negotiating for better grades. One of the most iconic lines was like, you mean to tell me you negotiated for better grades? It's like, I couldn't be prouder if these grades were traditionally earned or whatever. It's uh, yeah, he's just the best. Feels like a classic dad. And yeah, I love him. Dude, I, what a great pick. I quote him all the time. Everyone in LA, 20 minutes. Everywhere in LA is 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. <laughs> Round three, fight. Um, all right, this one's tough. I think, oh man, I got some goodies on here, bro. There's a lot of good ones. I got some goodies. Fucked up. It's just always, is it for heart or is it for audience? What do you do? How do you play it? I'm going to go with, you know what? There's no, Chris, you're the only guy who would take this pick from me. And I don't think you would have done it. I'm about to lose about every single listener to this fucking podcast. <laughs> I do it. I'm going with Peter Postulate in the name of oh, the father. That's such a good one. In the name of the father, Daniel Day Lewis movie. If you ever want to see Daniel Strider's face says it all. Can we, can we just focus on Strider's face right here? <laughs> he falls that's asleep. Such a good one. Oh, uh, Peter Postulate. So it's, if you ever want to see Daniel Day Lewis, like act like a more normal person in a movie, he does that in this one. Him and his dad get wrongly imprisoned for by the English because they think they're in the uh, IRA and they're in jail. And his son, Daniel Day-Lewis, is just full of hate. And Peter Postuate refuses to be angry for his situation. He treats everyone well, even the prison guards. And uh, he, you know, I, I don't want to spoil it, but even though things don't really work out for him, he always shows love to everyone. And that's what rubs off on his son in the end. And uh, Giuseppe. And one of the best, one of the best, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis, like everyone agrees, probably the most talented actor like ever, just on talent, like ability. And there was a review that once said like, Peter Postulate, the only other actor to ever land gloves on Daniel Day-Lewis. And he is tremendous in this movie. Most people probably know him from the town. He's the bad guy. He's the florist. Great actor. Uh, which he shot when he was dying because he's a beast. It's one of the best movies you'll ever see. The performances are unbelievable. And so much of it's just him and Daniel Day talking in a cell and it's amazing it's such a good one it's so smart thanks man um i really care about dads yeah huge miscarriage <laughs> justice I hope to be one one day it's a nice history lesson on a nick cannon level <laughs> <laughs> as long as i just don't have too much like phthalates from like plastic in my system joe rogan's been warning us about it dude um who's up chris you're up yeah, I don't like the way I didn't pick. I didn't do. I didn't pick like structure my draft well, but I'm gonna go. I want a child in peril and a dad who's gonna do nothing, who won't stop at anything, will mm. stop at nothing to get him back. Mel Gibson, ransom. Oh yeah, ransom. Dude, yeah. great pick, great pick. You know why too? Just say it, man. Say the line. <laughs> my son <laughs> also like exactly dude you know you got like shots of him like when it finally gets to like him like it was nice about it's it's a, it's a classic movie and then it ends with him and the kidnapper putting hands on each other mm -hmm. in the middle of the street you know and then you got a nice shot of him like because he's got like a flannel and a jacket on and he's sprinting in between taxi cabs running and he's and mel's got a really good uh Tom Cruise gets all the pub, but Mel's got a pretty good. Uh, it's more ferocious. Yeah, run. In he movies. runs like a, he just, a predator. Yeah, he just didn't. He wasn't able to run as long as Tom Cruise was age wise. You know, <laughs> props to Tom, but like he had a great one, and it's awesome in this. I and it's just his run, dude. Yeah, also, his butt slide. Oh yeah, he gets a nice car slide. You know, the hood slide. He one of the best that. moves ever when you slide uh, across the hood of a New a York taxi. Because the guy's like the guy's turning around to pull out a gun, and if he didn't do the slide, he wouldn't have got there in time to. So like, cause like right as the guy pulls it out, <laughs> he's on him grabbing the arm and then yeah. that's, you know, that's and awesome. it's just, you know, he's, he's kind of a shady dude. They kind of, uh, mm -hmm. they kind of hint that he might've like, you know, done some illegal dealings and he was investigated by the FBI, but it's kind of just like a 
side storyline because it's all about him just like look that's we're trying to we're trying to save this guy's son um renee russo's his wife it's beautiful mm. you know and he makes the difficult decisions he doesn't pay the ransom he's like um i'll pay, I'll pay people to kill the kidnappers before i pay yeah. the ransom i mean he put his fucking dick on the table right because he says because and they're like dick. and it's what everyone said don't do but he's like i don't think that they really will give us him back mm. so i'm gonna i'm taking th- matters into my own hands and i'm gonna make and he just pours out all the money on camera on news and it's like see this you're never gonna see it because i'm gonna go. hunt you till the end of the earth mm. it's awesome let's go it. it's a great movie it's, it's a so good movie good. it's so dude just freaked me out so much when i was a kid because i was so afraid of being kidnapped mm. still am a good bad bit. guy in that movie too gary sinise, gary sinise all the time it's very good he, yeah he's got a great bad he's guy got a face. creepy little face he does have a creepy yeah. little face gary and sinise. then he's got lily taylor's it's like you know the lady that he's doing it with, yeah. Delroy Lindo is the FBI agent. You know, it's just what is Delroy name. Lindo? Great, he's the man. It's just it's a is that a the sweet one movie? He's gone sixty seconds. Mm-hmm. Yep. Brothers Love is he's a great actor. Brothers Love, Brothers Love. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one? Is there another similar movie where he's like signing the check? Is that that movie? No, that same movie. No, okay, 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 okay. I don't want to say it in case someone watches Gary's, it. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. sorry, sorry. Good smart, smart. But it's that I love that part. Dude, smart cover there, dude. Thank you handle that very quickly. No spoilers, even though this is like twenty five years old, maybe more. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. still but here's the thing, young stokers, this art is out there and you need to go watch it. Dude, it excites me to think that some stokers would go watch Ransom and in the name of the father. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, you like you're going to be really entertained. Do it the way me and my brother did, where every Sunday we just get stoned at his L.A. apartment and watch like four movies. It was the best. That's nice. And then Dan Collins would leave to go garden, which always offended me. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. We were watching football one Sunday. He's like, I have to go tend to the garden. I was like, <laughs> here's a beer. He's like, no, I need to drive. I was like, all right, later. <laughs> I'll see you later. Uh, you know what? It was just, he just had his own thing to do and it, yeah. it brought him fulfillment, but it, it felt like he was his his lack of attendance felt like a judgment on what we had going on dude. so true yeah so true um strides all right guys we're coming down to it these are the, i know your- i know this is gonna be there's a direction i could go but i think you know i'm going hard here and this one is a movie once again made me cry um this character's name is just dad like on imdb pro and uh, it's Bill Nye from About Time. If you ever seen that movie, oh, Bill Nye. Uh, yeah, 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 Nye. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you had me thinking the science. Yeah, guy yeah, Bill yeah, Nye, the science guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Bill Nye, N I G H or something like. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to say it. N I G H Y. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I almost went with him, man. But dude, he has the ability to travel through time. He could be anything, and he's a wealthy dude. But he could be rich. He could pull anything off. Any stunt in the world. What does he choose to do with that incredible gift? Spend it with his boy playing ping pong and he doesn't spoil the gift for his son and then the end the dad the you know domino gleason who also has a fucking sick ass dad in real life brian gleason brandon gleason um so just one of those movies that like i watched with my fiance dude and she was like enjoying it and she looks over on the couch and i'm like (laughs) just swallowing all hard like dude (laughs) well it's because they kind of snug it they kind of they make it seem like it's a rom-com about domino gleason and rachel mcadams but that's kind of like second yeah, it's not secondary the, to the father son storyline. No, it's there's no like conflict there. You know no. it's going to work. It kind of just is dialed in from the beginning and then they they backdoor you with it and then you're two and a half acts in and you're like, "Is this a father son movie?" Yes, yeah, dude, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, you're there with your girlfriend and you're like, "Wait, honey, hold on, hold on, hold on." Dude, yes. You're like you're like, you're like you're like this one's actually for me. This one's actually for me. He can, he, dude, dude, dude. He can time travel, but it's a lot but it's cuz it's the rules. He's this is the last time he's going to see his dad. This is the last time they're playing ping pong. And the rules dad, are so and fucked dad, up. And the dad even knows and they're just sitting there. And of all the dads we've talked about, he's the most of like a poet dad. Yes. Like he really sees the world and like and you kind of have that with Benini too. You have a very oh, rom- yeah. you have a very romantic, romantic. list. Yes. That's true. I'm yeah. going more romance. You have like men of letters as your fathers. I but enjoy if it these comes men. to a war, you're... well, hey, my list ain't over yet. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't over yet, baby. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, you got a badass dad on there. I told you who we were gonna. I was gonna get. And oh, 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 right. You did say that. Yeah. I know. It's so tempting. It's just not just, I know. Just but here's the thing. It, bro. I can't do it though. That's so nice of you, dude. No, no, no. Hey, I have a backup, so you. I honestly might go with my backup. No, don't. Do what your heart desires. That would be so I don't off want, I, brand. I, don't, I don't want it. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got to go with Evil Dad. Nice. Right. I'm going to go with oh. an Evil Dad. Probably the most famous Evil Dad. 
Darth Vader. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the end of the, the <clears throat> trilogy all comes down to, the end of his story all comes down to him turning good because of his son. Him being a dad was the turning point for him. And, uh, yeah, it would suck to have him as a dad. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. It's like, yeah, you, it need, be, you need dad, all three your movies. dad's an evil galactic warlord who blows up right. planets. Yeah, but he's yeah. not even the boss. Like, yeah, he's, he's, he's not even the boss. The, he just works for the guy. He works for this wrinkly <laughs> old evil. dude. But it would also be kind of badass. He'd be like, my dad's Darth Vader. You know, he just kind of, oh, he's the fucking man. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, probably one of the biggest uh, moments in movie history is I am your father. Yeah. So, you know, I got to pay homage to that. Yeah. And, uh, and Luke takes it super well. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he cuts off his hand. Oh. Yeah. Mark Hamill's a bitch. Um, anyways. <laughs> Super traumatic. On set on Star Wars, the actor portraying uh, Darth Vader physically, David Prowse, is saying, I killed your father. And then in post that James Earl Jones said, I, I am your father. father. Yeah. You, you know, it's interesting, though. His reaction, though, it didn't, didn't Obi-Wan say in the... That he uh, killed his they dad. Kill him dad. So why would he I still react he that way? Um, well, so did they not know that that was going to be the ending of the movie and then they just pivoted to I am your father? Mm -hmm. Like, did they, they came up with the switch. So Lucas was two movies in, didn't know where it was going and then just had the aha moment in post. Yeah. Dude, that just tells you start something before you know the ending. You'll figure it out along the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was doing a good, everything else was cool. And then it's like, Hey, it wouldn't have been bad the other way. Probably it just wouldn't have been like, wouldn't have been the most famous shit ever. Yeah. 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 Then we got to meet this dad character, like care about him all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the new Obi-Wan spoiler alert at the end, you know, he's talking to Obi-Wan. He's like, you didn't kill Anakin. I did. Yeah. Who says that? Darth. Darth. Oh. oh. Him, and, him and Obi-Wan fight. Meaning he killed him like spiritually? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's a fucking... Hey, in some ways, that's a worse death, dude. True, dude. Final round. Fight. All right, this is a tough one. Okay. I got evil, I got badass, and I got good-hearted one when it comes to sex. Um, Who's the good-hearted when it comes to sex? Eugene Levy. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't picture Eugene Levy, but it makes sense. Right, yeah. Yeah, Because it's not him having sex. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to teaching about sex. With respect to sex. No disrespect. Eugene, I'm sure you lay pipe. I bet he does. Those eyebrows, dude? Yeah. That's high two count. I mean, you could do an eyebrow, you know, you do a mustache ride, do an eyebrow ride on that dude. Explain that. You know, you're... (laughs) Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going like this, and you're like, oh, oh. Um, you just need a little friction. Yeah, those, those freaking e brows, dude. Um, the brow dart, bro? The brow the dart. Brow dart. <laughs> dude, it's so funny on the podcast when some, the guy's like, um, his wife won't let him shave his pubes, and some people commented, they're like, some, so he's like, it's good. It stimulates the clitoris. Don't shave him. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, cool. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to go. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go with, you know, just a personal favorite of mine. And, uh, you know, I know this is against, I know I may lose Aaron on this one, but I got to do it because he's my guy. It's Brad Pitt and Moneyball. Oh, dude, great oh, pick. Nice yeah. one. Dude, holy shit, I can't believe I overlooked that. He yeah. wasn't on any of the lists. He's an amazing dad. Amazing dad. Because the yeah. whole movie's him caring about chain. I mean, look, we all know how we care about Moneyball here. Absent one dude. We like Moneyball. The, the one guy who's wearing a baseball hat. Yeah. Yeah. The expert. The expert. Whoa, dude. Dude, let's go. All right. That's funny. No, that's like really funny. Yeah, that's hilarious. Don't make me give you an e-brow ride, bro. (laughs) Yeah, but in the end, he gets the dream gig and he turns it down so he can be around his girl. Yeah, and uh, I mean that one scene too when he's listening to his his daughter play the song and everyone's tearing up. I'm tearing up. Brad's tearing up. 
The whole theater's tearing up. Um, <clears throat> so cute. And to, yeah, and he's just... I think he's uh, he's a good role model, too. Super solid. And, uh, uh, yeah, he's just a very kind of, like... He's a true dad. You know, he's not... He's not like um, who's the other guy? Who, Spike Jones. Spike Jones, who plays kind of like a, a weasel. You know, mm-hmm. he's sort of like a strong kind of alpha. He's spiky. Sports guy. Mm-hmm. You know, who's just fighting for his team, and she's like, "You okay, Dad?" He's like, "Yeah, don't worry about me. I got this." You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, a very realistic portrayal of a dad. I think that's uh, you know, you gotta you gotta say what up to. I think that's some of Brad Pitt's best acting when he's just reacting to her playing the song and he gets yeah. emotional. Yeah. But you didn't like that scene, right? No, I don't like that scene because the daughter is like super talented and stuff. And I'm like, dude, just give him a regular daughter. You think she's too talented? <laughs> like the song's too good. She's like a number one hit single. I'm like, all right, dude, the guy's a beast. He's got, he's got five tools. And yeah, but I bet you if it was a rich. boy, you wouldn't have judged her that hard. You'd be like, yeah, this kid's just pretty yeah, naturally true. talented. Yeah. Dude, probably the average boy guitar player, dude, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Best girl guitar player equals average boy guitar player, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, Strides, you're up, Fuck, dude. dude. You got your guy. Fuck. You got your I got guy. You take this. Yeah, but here's the thing. I, I got just... one more that might make Aaron Cream really hard. Dude. Oh. And my list, I don't know, think is making Aaron Cream right now, but I've gone for heart. I also have one that's such good heart, but I think I'll get him in honorable mentions, which will still feel good. But I always feel good about that part. But what? Uh, <laughs> just to throw him out there, and I know I know JT will love that, the dad that I'm thinking of. Oh, but, cool. Uh, Fuck, dude, how do I not do my guy and betray myself? I'm not going to do it. I got I to gotta go with Cameron Poe. He's my guy. Oh, okay. He's my okay. guy. Yeah. The other guy Thank I can make God. a great argument for, and it's badass, but this is a badass The dad. thing about Cameron Poe, you never see him with the kid, though. Yes, because... No, dude, I'm being a dick. No, because, being a but dick. here's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, if a knock against him, he did make the personal choice to never see his daughter for six or seven years and just write letters, but out of honor, because he didn't want her to see... I can't let her see me in this condition uh, like this in prison. Uh. And dude, he freaking <laughs> learns origami and mass and like does push ups and fucking becomes like a science, hard science major while in prison and just has nothing but integrity, dude. And he saves the motherfucking day. So it's awesome. And he's got so many good lines. He's just, he's probably my favorite character of all time. So I can't even believe that I was going to not do it. And in he, my head. through all that they go through in that movie, like multiple plane crashes, 25 gunfights. 30 murders, um, you know, people, yeah. cabins being open, uh, sandstorm, sandstorm kills a guy because the bunny, but, but the bunny on. at the end of the movie, he still gets that bunny to the girl. Casey Poe. He never loses that bunny. Why couldn't Casey you just put Poe. the bunny back in the box? And then what, what is What does he say when like, cause even at one point, the dude's like, hey, you could get back to your girl. And he's like, what kind of dad would I be if I left my best friend behind? And and it's with the woman too. Like that was actually a character choice by him to make him Southern. Cause he's like, I would feel that a Southern character would want to uphold a, a woman's honor. And they made that female security guard. Bishop. And put John, yeah, Bishop. And then dude, just, let's go. Dude. You know her and name? Johnny 23. <laughs> Johnny 23 says it like what he's right. like. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, <laughs> I can't leave you in this condition. Preserves protects her honor as a father figure to her, I guess, in that regard. But uh yeah, dude, just a freaking beast, dude. So he wears a tank top. Aaron Rodgers looks like him. I kind of drafted Aaron Rodgers this year for my fantasy team because he looked like Cameron Poe. So it's just nice. Dude, hell yeah, man. Yeah. You had a pretty good draft. Dude, thank you. We were driving Although each other Dobbins, up. We were, you guys really drove me up on Dobbins, which hurt really. But you bad. drove us up on T. Higgins. True, true. And I would have taken. We were him. the last guys with loot yep. in our draft, and yeah. I, I checked everybody's like bank account. And I was like, "Dude, Strider's got money. I know we're targeting the same guys." Yeah. We it's, drove him up on Pitts. Who? Yeah, you wanted. did. Fuck, I know. Fuck. Frustrating. Uh, Dobbins is always really an overpay. That's gonna. I'm worried. I hopefully he's just healthy. I don't know. And then me and my brother, we won't get into the details, but we had a rough draft. Not the act, no, not the actual draft, but just the weekend itself. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. The really? Parr family, we left with our heads a little bit lower. Yeah. Might have drank a little too much Friday, JT Saturday. We switched off. After I got on you on Saturday morning, I was like, hey, man, you might need to chill. Hey, you weren't wrong. And then that night, I, dude, I just got, I was playing drinking games. I didn't plan to drink that much. And, oh. You were on a heater. Dude, you dominated. You won like seven games of beer die. We just got, we got hot. Dude, I think bro. it might have been 10 plus. Dude, I swear it, it might have been crazy. 10. We didn't even know the number. We were just like, dude, it was, it's a record. Dude, these guys I just know I drank winning. 20 beers. Yeah. 
and that's then a I, lot. That's yeah, a lot of beers, my tum tum can oh. handle it all. No. Um, Chris, who you taking? Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Royal Tenenbaum from the Royal. Dude, Tenenbaums. I was gonna do that. Nice. You son of a bitch. The wild card pick. He's so. <laughs> he's just such a shit. Um. He's. But it's really nice to just see him grow as a father over the course of the movie, and like all of his kids just have a really tortured relationship with him. But you know, he's also really he becomes a really good grandfather. You know. And it's a great movie. Yeah, I love that movie, movie yeah. so much. Um, kind of the biggest relationship in it is like him and Ben Stiller, who they have like the most tortured relationship. But he's a liar through and through. Just always just kind of been a piece of shit. But he's also really charming. And it's really well acted by Gene Hackman, who hits all the notes. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I really I love that movie. And wanted a little bit more comedy for my list. Uh, and yeah, that's it. It's a good list. All right. I got some great options here. I got some sweetie dads, some absolute sweeties. I got some fun dads, but I'm going to go with the dad that I don't know if you could go to this dad and cry about your day. I don't know if you could go to this dad and appeal to his softer side. He he's he he has a rarefied air. He's almost like a king. You know what I mean? But he extended that kingness to his kids, most of them. Not one little shit. It's a little fucker, one of the kids. I'm going with Brando and the Godfather. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. Was that pick boring? No, it was um smart pick. It's, smart. On, it's on every list. It's on every list. Sucks. <laughs> just funny the reaction. Like, <laughs> it's a shitty pick. I don't know. He's the Godfather. It's like no, in the name, no. yeah, yeah. and it's, it's also nice because he's like you know he's like a father to his whole fucking community. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? he's a patriarch. And then he uh, it's all in the name, and he did a good job with two of the kids. I mean, Sonny's a little hot headed. Michael a little bit too evil by the end, but hey, that's life and the business he's in. And you know, he does turn the business legit. He does a lot of things right. And, you know, he gets them through a war, but you always get one screwball kid. He got Fredo, but, um, well, plus the adopted kid, basically. Yeah. Which one's that? Oh, Oh, Duvall. uh, Yeah. Like he's also a father to him. Yeah. He's paternal to the world. Yeah. I love that. That's kind of what I got with Stamper too. These guys are just exude like patriarch and, uh, yeah. And he, you know, he's just a G. He's calm. He always talks quiet. I don't think you ever see him get like properly angry in any of those movies. Yeah. Like he's just, you can't rattle him. He just is like, you have complete confidence in his judgment. And so that's why I'm going with him. All right, guys. Well, that's our four. Should we throw out some, uh, I think we're just going to keep it at four for this one, right? Yeah. With dads. Well, so here I, I got boys in the hood, Lawrence Fishburne, incredible mm-hmm. dad. Nice. Strong as hell. Uh, I wanted to do Jerry Maguire as like a, like a stepfather, oh, yeah. but could have been a little bend Bronx tale, eighth grade, Oh, Bronx eighth tale. grade. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. The dad eighth in eighth grade, grade. such a sweetie. That's what I was going to say. He's such a sweetie. And then I, uh, Coda, the dad in Coda. The dad in Coda. Oh, so you haven't cool. seen it. Haven't seen yeah. It. You haven't seen it yet? No, I haven't seen oh, it. It's, it's cute. Really good. Yeah. You'll like it. It's it's really and the dad's good, unreal. He's so funny. Clark Griswold. Clark, Clark Griswold. Griswold. I mean, it's kind of toxic right now, but you, you, Will Smith, I mean, in, in uh, Lord Kingfisher and also in Pursuit of Happiness. Pursuit yeah. of Happiness, yeah. I've I almost seen the... I've like watched like 10 minutes. Pursuit of Happiness just seemed boring. He's a, it's, it's a boring movie. It's very like boilerplate, yeah. like, you know, uplifting me against like tough times kind of movie, but he is a phenomenal father in it. Yeah, yeah you can't... You, no, um, I got, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, Denzel's got some interesting ones because he's a really shitty father and he got game. Right. But it's really fun. Like, it's, it's a good performance. It's compelling. compelling. But then you also have John Q, which is in, like, the My Son's in Peril, and I'll yeah. do anything to save yeah. his life, including at one point he's ready to, like, shoot himself so that they could take his heart and put it into his kid. doesn't come to that. Spoiler. He'll sacrifice But, him. like, you know, so he's kind of got the full range between those two. I've got two. Uh, Matthew McConaughey and Interstellar. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, 
Jack Burns, Meet the Parents. Yes. Fun one. So and, good. And, and also one. Robert De Niro and Silver, uh, Silver Linings. I almost wrote that too. Oh, yeah. yeah that's a really that's good one. That, especially at the end. When he's like, he's like, I don't know if she ever loved me, but this girl loves you. Yeah. That, that he's a degenerate he's, he's gambler, a real though. he's a real dad because yeah. he has flaws yeah but i don't think you ever doubt that he loves his kids in the movie no, yeah, he's, yeah. He's definitely not robin williams mrs doubtfire dude that was on a bunch of best dads yeah. list i was like what the fuck the are you guy's a maniac dude <laughs> yeah. put the donkey in the house dude dresses up like an old woman it's like whoa and he's like a shitty husband like the whole reason he got yes. kicked out is because he was like immature and irresponsible <laughs> and then they're like but he comes back <laughs> to spend time with his kids i'm like in the weirdest way possible that's what's he so, could have just got a job. Like, exactly. That's so. That's what's so. Uh, that's the push and pull. Yeah, of it. evil's like, like it's a crazy premise. Like, Seriously. what if this dad pretended to be an old lady so he can hang out with his kids? And it's always a t- it's a testament to Robin Williams that the movie works. Yeah, yeah, d- yeah. I mean, I, it always bummed me out. You got, dude, Tim Allen, the Santa Claus. Oh, He becomes yeah, yeah. Santa, Dude, bro. great dad. Yeah, yeah. The Arnold Denny Jingle scene. all the way. Yeah, Jingle all the way. Arnold. Arnold Commando. I almost went oh, Arnold yeah, Commando. Commando. That's a great That's one. Another, like, I was going to do that. <laughs> do the uh, ice cream cone licking scene. When yeah, they had, like, just, just tossing her around in the pool. They yeah, just like live off the grid. Just him and his daughter. Rocky Balboa, good dad. Bro, his yeah. his yeah, kid yeah, yeah. just sucks. But then Creed's a good kid. Oh, um, right. Maximus and Gladiator. Oh, yes, yes. I mean... Posthumously, he'll do anything Dude, for this. Larry yeah. Miller, Ten Things I Hate About You. Oh, yes. that's why I almost went one. for sitcom dad. I was like, he's yeah. my, one of my favorites. Uh, Dennis Quaid in Parent Trap Ooh. and in Frequency. Frequency, oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. in Frequency. Oh, he's but is Jim yeah. Caviezel better than is his character? Is the I don't remember. No, he's that. the dad. He's so the dad it, from the past. He's the dad, and he's the fireman. And he's talking to Jim Caviezel's the cop, right? The present. Yeah, yeah. Dennis but they're Quaid. hunting the same killer. Yep, that's uh, a great fun movie. Fun premise for that one. Yeah. One of my favorite dads is the dad in Legally Blonde. When she's like, I'm going to go to law school. He's like, law school? He's just drinking a martini. Law school's for people who are ugly and boring. <laughs> <laughs> he's just drinking, yeah, he's drinking a cocktail with a sweater around it. Um, Dude, Dr. Evil. I thought Dr. that's who you were Dr. saying Dr. when you were saying he's evil. Yeah, same. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Dr. Evil. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about it. Yeah. Two animated guys, Mustafa and the Lion King, yeah. and uh, the dad in Finding Nemo. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, Stanley Tucci Mufasa. and Easy oh, did I say Mustafa? Yeah. I thought it was Mustafa too. Yeah, why did I think Mufasa? I really wrote down Mustafa. It's Mufasa. Whoa. <coughs> That's some Bernstein Bear stuff right there. Yeah. Steve Martin, Parenthood. Yes. Yep. Good yep. dad. Um, oh, t- Road to Perdition, Tom Hanks. The movie's just such a They won't bummer. get Michael. Yeah, that's why they put it on there. It's also... Preserving innocence and life is beautiful. I think does that much, much. Better. Yeah, he kills him in the end. Doesn't let the, he doesn't let his son sully himself that way. Not, uh, not the best movie, but I've always just kind of liked it. Definitely, maybe, dude. Ryan Reynolds, very good. Oh dad. yeah, it's yeah, like, fun it's movie. Like, very it's like, cute. It's like he's like we uh, all hate Ryan Reynolds, but, but very he's, cute. But he's but he's but he's, humor. he's not in a Ryan Reynolds movie yet to where it is now. You know what I mean? So he's like he still has his like charm you know what i he's mean like but it's not like it's not 30 not it's not sincere yeah thing. but it's not cranked up like he's playing like a normal human yeah you know what i mean and like yeah. a cute one at that dude uh the dad in finding nemo yeah yep. yep. uh lincoln oh. hawk and over the top sliced alone great one dude <laughs> boom just win his kid back dude yeah, yeah. No, it's a good one dude, dude working out while he's driving the, dude teaching your kid how to drive an 18 wheeler too come, come on. on dude lincoln in the movie nice, lincoln. come on yeah, yeah. Lincoln. You, you just got want some to, shit, kids. You just want to yeah, real life punch Lincoln, Joseph yeah. Gordon Levitt. Yeah, it dude. makes you hate Joseph Gordon Levitt, and you're like, well, he didn't write the part, but you're like, yeah, he's still fucked up, though. Yeah. Dude, Kevin uh, Bacon in Death Sentence. <laughs> oh, man. That Remember that movie? movie? Nice <laughs> office, motherfucker. <laughs> nice office, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> bad Dad, Jack Torrance, The Shining. Yeah, real oh, yeah. bad dad. Chasing his kid around in a maze with an axe. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church in that uh, Killer Joe movie with McConaughey. Dude, the worst dad, <laughs> the worst dad, dad ever, dude. The He's worst. Such a... Holds his son down while the killer <laughs> is... beats him to death to save his own skin. Yeah, just yelling, that movie, get the up, worst Joe. dad. Dude, that was you... the most harrowing thing I've ever seen. Dude, we've seen some movies in groups where you're like, <laughs> what were we doing? There's like six of us and then everyone else in the movie is a solo. A solo yes. guy. Um, uh, De Niro in a Bronx Tale. It's a great one. And then, dude, he's a he's a shitbag, but he's so funny. Uh, Jeff Daniels and Squid and the Whale, for if oh, anyone's ever yeah. seen. It. And then, dude, two good. I have two dads who are like amazing, but you're almost like it's so movie. Uh, 
Stanley Tucci and Easy A. Love him. Oh, yeah, he's great. And then Michael Stuhlberg and Call Me By Your Name. Yep, they're both. Mm, I had fun. Them both. You want to know a good one? Matthew Perry and 17 again. Yeah. Or, or oh. AKA Zach Efron. Right. Oh, right, because he's a dad. Yeah. That's a great, it's a great one, one, too. He crushes it, it dude. Yeah, because he gets to go to high school with his kids. Thought about that for my time Cute travel. Movie. Once. That's I was like, really. Ooh. 17 again. It's a so great, fun. dude. Good movie. No one good doesn't movie. like that movie, dude. No, it's very good. No, you can put. And uh, then they do that cool thing in the credits where they play that naive song by the kooks and they they yeah. show all the cast oh, yeah, high real. school photos it's, it's very fun uh albert finney and big fish yeah oh yeah vigo captain fantastic vigo the road yeah i never saw Cormac that. mccarthy dark movie bomber movie but he's a good dad yeah i read the book um the oh, book, dude, book was good harrison ford get off of my plane Trying to get his kids oh, back. Oh, yeah. I was going to do that one, but I fucking That's went with Cameron Poe. Other kind of Harry Stamper moment, like, I'd love to have my daughter talking to a Chechenian terrorist and say, my father's nothing like you. That would jack me up. Yeah. Time. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that could happen, dude. Yeah, no, I'm, not, dude, I'm no. not ruling it out. You're on the right trajectory. I'm yeah. planning on a big you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Do we feel good? The dad feels feel pretty good. I always feel like with these listeners, like there's one I'm missing. Yeah, of course. We're going to get... Someone's going to be Ooh. like, what about uh, the dad from Modern Family? And we'll have to be like, dude, it's a fucking, <laughs> fucking, fucking TV, dude. It's a fucking TV show. Oh, dude, people... You stupid fuck. The kids are all right. Mark Ruffalo, surrogate. Dad, like, he's just... Uh, yeah. And he kind of gets... He's hot. hot. People he's say hot. Um, Atticus, Atticus Finch from the movie, but it's more of literature. That was number was like, one on every best dad list, but yeah. uh, big blind spot for me. I never yeah. seen it. Never seen it. Never read it. Read it in high school. Great character. He is a great character. All right, Aaron. All right. The only father here. The only father here. Oh, oh. yes. You pulling the expert card? <laughs> Twice? The sure. double expert card? Yeah. Uh, as as a father who just got back from a uh, four-day road trip. Oh, yeah. Did, did you oh, go? Yeah, yeah. Were you in Santa Cruz? Is that where you went? No, Sequoia. Where's Sequoia? Sequoia National Park. Uh, it's like three hours. It's it's above Bakersfield, Visalia. Oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah, yeah. What cool? Um, as I was saying, as a as a dad who just came back from a road trip, my number one would have been Clark Griswold. Had anybody? No, see, he's he a mentioned, bad dad though. But he's doing his. He's trying. Yeah, he's, yeah, doing, he's doing his trying. best. Here, Mike, grab the or sorry, Strider, grab the. Uh, see, I thought about that, but he's like actually kind of a bad dad, and like. Yeah, you know, Vegas vacation is my works. favorite one. But, yeah. but yeah, here's the thing: he's an interesting guy. Well, you but know I don't think is? he's a good dad. Aaron's relating into it from the perspective of a father, and we're all relating into it from the perspective of a son. True, kids. true. So we're like, oh, I wouldn't want Clark Griswold as a dad, but you're like, that's what it feels like to be a dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Clark's a selfish fuck. Dude. Fuck, yeah. dude. He's always doing what he wants to do, mm-hmm. and then making it be like, but I did it for you guys. Yeah, I think ultimately mm-hmm. it comes to that. But I mean, who of us is not? somewhat selfish none of us are bad dads us four all, <laughs> all four of us are perfect dads at this point i've literally never made a mistake in that department uh i i couldn't even honestly think of a ton while i was uh sitting here but uh george mcfly back to the future oh, nice yeah. goofy dad steps up though steps up he does, he big does. time puts the hands on biff but not when he's a father he's still he doesn't even know he's a dad at that point yeah. uh if you're going to go Mel Gibson, you got to go Danny Glover and Lethal Weapon. He's got Great three dad. Kids, and he's a cop. Good dad, Homicide yes. cop. Ooh. That probably would have been on my list. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big omission. And then if you're going to go Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson, the Patriot. Mm. He's got like eight kids. I, I, I got to say, though, reality. if you get two of your yeah. kids fucking killed. Yeah, you're right. At you're a right. certain point, up. like. It's colonial times, man. It's hard to keep them that's it's true. The it's the same war. guy. He didn't it's even see war. it coming the second time. It's the same guy. You're going to let the same guy kill two of your fucking kids, man? Who is this I mean, ghost? I mean, God forbid that ever happened. Not come on. Your ghost. Uh, blast. <laughs> All right. So uh, where do you want me to start? Four? Yeah. Yeah, go, go, okay. go, go, go. Start, start with me. No, 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 no. no come on, Strider. No. Um, God, it's so hard. I, I feel like I, I know who my number one is. Yeah. I know my two is three, four, kind of close. I just think in terms of order, this list could be way better 
ordered, and I've you've admitted to that, and I think that's Chris as my fourth pick. What were his picks again? Oh, I should re I should recap everybody's pick actually. Um, uh, but that feels shitty now that I've said. Oh, my last pick is no, but I think uh, it's good if you do it like fourth and then you name the picks. It's probably okay. the easiest way to hear. Okay, it. sure. Yeah. Uh, Chris had Mr. Incredible, uh, Henry Jones Sr. From Sean Connery and Indiana. And, uh, what's this? Indiana Jones last, last, last crusade. crusade. Sorry. Uh, Mel Gibson ransom Royal Tenenbaum. Um, you came third and fourth picks were boom. I think they were strong for everybody. Um, that's why I, f- I feel like you're, everyone's draft could have kind of gone in a different order and, and maybe been more clear. Um, in terms of Royal Tenenbaum, if there's one thing in this world I dislike as much as Moneyball, it's Wes Anderson films. Dude, you know what? Oh. <laughs> I never could thought about Mr. it. Fox. I could see you hating Wes Anderson a lot. Yeah. Because he's just too cute for you. I like Mr. Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is a dad. It's got good sports in it, though. It's got like kind of a baseball game in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's like the most... And it, and when it came out, that was the most Wes Anderson movie he had ever made. Dude, no way, dude. Darjeeling Limited, bro. <laughs> Did that come out yet? <laughs> bro. Did that come out yet? And Life Aquatic was already out. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, dude, no way, <laughs> <It's a toss-up. laughs> dude. There's way more Wes Anderson movies, <laughs> It was movies, animated. Dude. That's like... <laughs> dude. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an argument. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, my third pick. <laughs> my third pick again. I I feel like these picks are pretty strong. Could have gone in a different order, maybe feel stronger. But I'm gonna go Chad with Eugene Levy, Liam Neeson, Darth Vader, Brad Pitt, Moneyball. It's a great list. Said my piece on that. It's third. Third, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is important to know. I mean, I know a lot of people didn't know the character's actual name, um, but Liam Neeson's one in Taken is so bizarre. Oh, I I wrote it down. Mark something. Yeah, it's like dude. uh, Can I look at Brian Mills? Brian Mills. That's That's a weird name. That's That's why you wouldn't remember it. Dude, that guy plays quarterback for the Texans. Yeah, Yeah, that's Um, that's not a good name for him. I know it really isn't because he doesn't ditch the accent. He has. You you know, his name should have been in the movie Liam Neeson. Dude. Did you Hell just yeah. you already had frequency on here? I did, yeah. Is that is that all dads in there? No, this is his kickers list for fantasy. And then on the Hilarious. back he wrote a bunch of uh But honestly, I think if you go Darth Vader or or Liam Neeson number one, Eugene Levy is in like three. Yeah, Eugene Levy was four. like a cultural moment. I think he's great. Like, don't get me wrong, I just don't know that he's a number one. Aaron, people have level. been giving you heat for yeah. caring about the order. No, but it's true. Hey, you gotta draft I mean, in order. Yeah. But but, but espouse on it. The, I I just think it's important that the the top four picks be in sequence. Not I'm not uh, I'm saying of yours. You know your number ones. Each number one should be a number one, no doubter. Yeah, that's like your Jordan that you're building the rest of the team around. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I think. And, and you know, I think any of those could have been outside of Brad Pitt, obviously. Right. In money, <laughs> Moneyball. Brad Pitt, great. Actual dad. We're not so sure how good an actual dad he is. Oh, right you now. know what? None of that will be heard on this podcast. <laughs> it's, right? not, it's not relevant to the argument. Oh, because yes. he like slugged one of the kids? Maybe. Yeah. We don't he know probably doesn't. Like I got to tell you, my dad hit me a couple times. Very justified. Yeah. Love you, dad. Uh, yeah, me too. Don't give me I was wrong. a shit heel. Yeah, yeah. There was a couple times where he was wrong, but that's when I came back on him. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I came back on the man. But you can't be Good too times. mad about that. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, bad. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Okay, my number two. All strong picks. Again, I think just slightly different order. I think it's the fucking Godfather. Go Vito Corleone number one. Why why Wait, hold Oh well, yeah. How are you gonna how are you gonna how, how are you gonna hammer me? For getting Giannis Atatakembo in the second round, isn't that just a like a? Uh, and then, and then, can't you be disappointed that no one else took him? Like I am. Don't get me wrong. Right, but I did the thing. I took him. I know, but I think. But like getting great Tom Brady. Later, I got Tom Brady. Isn't in, that a bonus? What round did Tom Brady go in? Six or seven? Or was it Sixth. fifth? Six. I should know that. Yeah. Um, or a fantasy, or or the real life. Real, real life, life, real life. Well, what I'm saying is, I don't think yeah. Harry Stamper to me is a number one. Okay, so but 
I know I will get pushed back for that. That's fine. I get very defensive. Um, I, I understand. I have to breathe. I have to breathe. <laughs> I, I get. To, I just get too worked up. Um, here's here's my thing. And I, I love it. I'm not I, changing my pick. No, so. no. I, I totally understand. I just I just like I always have to explain to the jury what happened. Uh, I went with Stamper number one because I was worried one of these fellas. I didn't. I wasn't worried about these guys taking Vito Corleone, but I was very right. worried about these guys taking Harry Stamper. He was on my list. He was on my I'm list. Sure. I'm sure. Where he wouldn't. Have, that would have been how many picks? It would. Have, I would have been eighth and ninth. No way. See, he's coming if, back. if you're, yeah, if they're always, if everyone's gonna pick him, then I don't know. Maybe it's not. My list was hard though, so I wasn't gonna take him. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying it's actually a, a, a discredit to Stamper that he's so. No, I just think it would have. I don't know. I just respect someone going out of the nineties. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Number one, but I, I liked it. I like Dan Hedaya. Like this is why you're two. Like I like Dan Hedaya. I like Pete Postlewaite. Even though I haven't seen that movie, I know what a great actor he is. Good actor. And how he needs to be more recognized for that. See, that that clueless. Pick. That could have been a fourth pick. pick. Was no great. one would take like, him. Yeah, are all my picks in the nineties? Is 90s oh no, Vito. 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 Is 97, is 90s, 71. Is 90s the decade of the dads? I think well for us especially because we were all coming right. of age then. So that makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. I think Godfather yeah, 72. Well, yeah, so we had uh, Harry Stamper 1, Dan Hedaya, Clueless uh, 2, Pete Postlewaite in the name of the father, and 4, Vito Corleone. Yeah, it's a great list. All right, well, Strider, how My you number feel? Number 1. I feel great. I went with heart, baby. Strider Wilson. It went with heart, <laughs> and I respect that. It, once that list started coming out, it was like, holy shit, all right. Uh, Roberto Benigni, Life is Beautiful. <laughs> Steve Martin, Father of the Bride. Bill Nye in About Time. Do you know this about me? That this is the most I've cried in a movie. Oh, I think we might have actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he definitely knew that. You knew that. Did you guys? Did you oh, chat? Wait. Did I know that he's a dude? Yeah, that's dude. true. We all cried Everyone a lot during about time. In that movie, dude. That's true. How long will I love you? Yeah, yeah. I was. As long Lee as and I were together. It wasn't you. that long, and I had to sit there in the theater for a long time. To gather myself oh like afterwards yeah, yeah that's yeah, beautiful yeah, baby yeah, yeah. hey baby you got to go with that number one then that's beautiful yeah, yeah. and then cameron poe what a great my guy the fact that it lasted to four great he needed a protector on but him. yeah what a badass maybe the most shredded dad oh, protector is my number one who's your number one um guido from life is beautiful yeah well, I mean, like, but I mean, a badass. Yeah, but like, yeah, you're badass. <laughs> I haven't seen life is beautiful. Someone who can I, use. Guns. I saw that guy at the Oscars. I don't think he's protecting you from more than like a loose rabbit. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you know what I mean. And the fact that he's soft. Let's let's all give credit to the fact that Strider did not fuck this up. Thank you. Yeah, man. yeah. Was it hard? Did you think about stepdads? Yes. What were what were your yes. like? I wanted oh. to do Uncle Buck. I was like, dude, he's a good fucking dad character. He steps up, comes to the party. Uh, yeah, I think I think your your kryptonite is when you think you're gonna make Aaron Crane. Yes, now, I was gonna do Commando. Your, yeah, you stuck. Oh, that would have been sick. But you Cameron Poe's my guy. I wouldn't yeah. have Crane for Commando. Okay, you wouldn't. Have? I wouldn't. Okay. Have, no. Okay, good. Would you have? Popped Can't believe we wood. forgot Lethal Weapon though. Fucking, I, I talked to a friend about that. But Aaron, thank you, dude, for the dub. And uh, I mean, quite honestly, no matter what, even getting Guido my number one. I had an emotional reaction when I thought of it and I was like, dude, this is great. So just fired up. I'm always happy to see a Strider dub. Dude, thank you so much. I'm and not, but good job. Thank you. Hey, you know what? It makes the dub earned. You know, you guys put together great lists. So. Oh, <laughs> very go. magnanimous, dude. dude <laughs> something that I would teach my man. son, magnan <laughs> magnanimity, I would teach him that. And I'd also teach him, I'd also hire a tutor to teach him how to pronounce words. When your dad had you in the dictionary, right, brother? Had to, dude. Had to fucking look up words, dude. You did? Like how often? Every night. Every night. Every night, ten words. Interesting. That's too you, many. You tell did I do words. it? How many are you gonna retain? Think I ever did it? Also, I did, mean, you could double words. I mean, you could like look it up again if you don't know it. That counts. Do you tell him? So he'd say. Also, like, I wow. didn't do it. So you know, he also, like, <laughs> what do you say? Like, what are your? Ten I like words? how you feel like a badass. Yeah. Like you're still getting away with it. You're like. Take that, Dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, ooh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then you, you text your dad after this. You're like, don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, skip, <laughs> skip at the 57 mark. That'd be funny yeah. if your dad listened to the podcast. <laughs> um, look up the words. All right, dudes. Good, good list, guys. Good draft. Good dads. Maybe we'll do good Fuck. moms next or something. Ooh, I Maybe got we got to do a TV one. one. Yeah, I think TV one. I think we're. We're uh, due. Have we done a TV one? We haven't done TV yet. 
Dude, TV dads would be good. Yeah. You get Kevin Costner, Yellowstone, Tony Soprano. Oof. Walter White. And Don Draper, what literally, is like the worst, four dad. worst dads <laughs> in history. It's like, awesome characters, it's like really compelling characters that are really bad yeah. dads. What about Tate? Who's gonna look after the ranch? I guess I don't know about Kevin Costner. I've only seen one episode of that. Dude, show. I love that show. I'm surprised he didn't. Did he ever play a movie dad? I was trying to think. That's what I was, I was thinking. Like he, actors, he, he, I was like, a, Field of Dreams. Yeah. He's got kids, but that movie's really boring. Oh, so. bro, yeah, snoozer. What's up, dudes? I'm interrupting this podcast let you know once again that we are brought to you by us. We got a new show coming out on Netflix called Chat and JT Go Deep. Uh, it's fun. Lots of fun. And it'll take you on an emotional journey. So check it out on Netflix right now. Chat and JT Go Deep. We also uh, have tour dates coming up. We are going to be in Honolulu next week. We're in North Carolina and South Carolina this week. Uh, we're going to be in Nashville, Chicago, Boston, Seattle, we have Seattle dates coming up. Salt Lake City, Denver, Atlanta, New York. Get your tickets at chatandjt.com. You can see stand-up and then a Q&A, so it's a mix of stand-up in the pod. Do not miss out. We're also brought to you by the legends at Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims peeved, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dinks are looking fresh and clean because smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. And it's time to trim those balls and make sure that you have nice, fresh pubes for Halloween because that's going to come up too. And you're going to want to make sure that you can carve a nice pumpkin in there. And the only way you can like carve the pumpkin of your pubes is by getting a Manscaped lawnmower. Uh, they got the lawnmower 4.0 right here. The Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. And then if you get the performance package, you get all these little goodies like ball deodorant and fucking shampoo and conditioner, body wash, all that crap. Yeah, freaking everything. You need. Then you get the Shed Travel Bag and the boxers and everything. The, a lug, the Shears 2.0 Luxury Nail Grooming Kit. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP at manscaped.com. Keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer and enter fresh ball fall. We're also brought to you by the Legends of Athletic Greens. What up, Athletic Greens? Thank you guys for sponsoring the podcast, guys. I use Athletic Greens every day. I put a scoop of Athletic Greens in water every day, and I get all my vitamins and minerals and nutrition in one scoop. I get vitamin D. I get... I get all the vitamins I get. It's literally you get, you know, in Matrix when they have like that goop that gives you everything the body needs. Well, Athletic Greens is that goop, but it tastes good. So you're literally like you're in the Matrix, but it tastes good and things in life is fruitful and enjoyable. So get this stuff because as 75 high quality vitamins and minerals, whole food for whole food source, geez, superfoods probiotics and adaptogens it's lifestyle friendly keto paleo vegan dairy-free gluten-free no gmos and any of that crap it's got seven thousand five five-star reviews this one's a no-brainer guys get on the athletic greens train right now right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash go deep to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right. Let's get back to the show. All right, Chad. Who's your beef of the week? My beef of the week is... Uh, Derek at the Froyo place I frequent, Yogurt Land. Uh, Derek's sort of the frequent register cashier there. I don't know what it is about, and this is like not just specific to Derek, but actually Chipotle I go to as well. I don't know the people there, their names, but they seem pissed off when I come in. You know, it's like it'll be like that Froyo would probably be like ten forty five. They're looking to close at eleven. Chipotle all coming at 9.45. They're looking to close at 10. And every time I walk in, they're like, you can just walk in here. They're pissed off that I'm coming in. And look, I get it. You're tired. You want to end your shift. Totally understand. But, you know, you don't have to give me attitude for wanting to get some Froyo, Derek. All right? You know, just like 
you know, come in. Don't don't even. You, you could just be like, "What's up, dude?" You know, you can You don't have to like give me the eyes of just like like he looks at me. He's like the gall, mm-hmm. the gall. Like you're gonna come in now to get froyo, and I'm like, we're hungry. We we want ice cream. Uh, it's just, you know, Derek. I don't know. It's uh. Well, I totally like vibe with you on that too. Cause like when you go in to get Froyo, like you're trying to be in a happy go lucky, good spirit. Like uh, Froyo and- is a delightful treat that boosts your mood. And then you go in there and you're dealing with like, you know, some kind of dour personality. Like that's not the, the kind of energy you're looking for. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know, it's like, and I, here's the thing. I always am in a good mood when I go to get Froyo. And then Derek gives me the look. And he gives me like a stink eye and I'm like, all right, maybe I'm not going to get whipped cream now. Mm. You yeah. Know? You feel, you feel guilty being like sprinkles. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'm not going to take my time at the toppings bar. I'm going to get out of there because Derek is giving me the stink eye yeah. because he wants to go give e rides to his lady. And then you got to wonder if homie's aware of that. And he knows that giving you that energy is knocking you off yeah. your patient topping. And I wonder process. if I wonder if when he's doing that afterward after his shift he's like he's like man dude Chad really didn't get the you know the froyo he really wanted you know because I didn't sometimes I do want Jimmy's you know sometimes 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 I'll go in there thinking hey I want Reese's peanut butter cups and Jimmy's just sprinkles okay on the East Coast whoa but I still say I brought that back oh. I thought it was, you were talking about a hand job. Yeah, uh, condoms. No condoms. Yeah, oh. sometimes. Well, well actually, Jimmy's are just penises because right? it's Jimmy hats. Oh. oh no, but they some people call call condoms Jimmy's too. Whoa, um, that's crazy. Sorry, I actually man. sorry, you know, I, I really came in hot there, dude. I, I actually have I was done, piping mad, dude. I have done that on a you know when my lady and I were sort of like in the mood. I'll, she's like, hey, can you get me froyo? I'll go get froyo. But I'll put a magnum in there. <laughs> she'll be like, <laughs> "Well, an unwrapped like, magnum." Don't you <laughs> not use magnums? And I'll be like, "It's gold. It looks better in the froyo." But I got a Trojan hot and cold. Nice, Whoa, that's dude. That's a smart freaky. way to eat frozen yogurt. Is to take a magnum, just go up to the seltzer thing, and just fucking just then just like a gogurt, dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. Remember those gogurts? Where, yeah, you dude, yeah, a lot just, of. It's, a lot of volume in there. Dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can imagine you brought that to Derek. Oh, dude. He t- just tied it off and he's like, is that a condom full of uh, strawberry? You should try it. Do yeah, it what favor. does it look like, dumbass? <laughs> 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 Fucking Derek. This guy's pissing me off, dude. You should get whatever Froyo you want. You know what I mean? Dude, I, yeah, but is there, I, I don't know. I've just noticed it lately. When you walk into a place and it's like close to closing time, they give you this look of like, how dare you? Yeah, walk into this establishment close to closing time. And I, you know, I hear you. I understand it, but this was a recent Maurice beef. Was it? Yeah, he he really? was beefing with us at Mel's. Yeah. Oh really? We got in there at nine fifty, and they're like, "We're closed." He's like, "You close at 10 The <laughs> chairs aren't even flipped up yet. <laughs> Amazing. But then dude. he caught himself, and he's like, "Well, it is booths." <laughs> 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 that's one thing if you're getting food for there if you're being a huge psycho and getting your yogurt for there with Derek's like yeah then that might be on you oh yeah yeah but you're getting don't want to get the yogurt solo for there you're getting it to go oh I never I never go I never go for there yeah exactly Derek's Dude, I'm, I'm, chill, quick. I'm quick <laughs> classic flavors I don't do tasting I, I like chocolate and vanilla it's nice cool. your man who knows what you want Strider Dude, my beef of the week is with um you know typically I try to stay off the thread or reddit or anything like that and one of my bros sent me a pic and i didn't you know it came to my attention um that i've been wearing these exact shorts way too much dude and i got called out on it oh like, really does strider even own another pair of shorts dude i like the shorts they're comfy dude and here's the thing am i giving these shorts gene treatment yeah and are they dirty yeah dude but I've been posting up in these puppies, dude, and I like them, dude. And yeah, I smell them before I wear them, and that's wrong. It's a little gross, but they pass my smell test, so it's all good. It's so tough when you love an article of clothing because then you want to wear it all the time. But then if you wear it all the time, 
you get no, you know, you don't want too many pictures of it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You wear the same nice shirt to like big events. Then, you know, it's popping up all the time on social and then you might get roasted for it. It's tough. Yep. Uh, I like yep. you staying strong it's true. too. I think next pod that you're on, you should just wear the shorts and no shirt. I will. I'll do that. And here's the thing. I or just I, wear this outfit every day at work. This is a great outfit. Just the Joe Pelazon got me the shroom shirt. I love it, dude. Thank you, dude. You could just, well, I guess Christmas, it's around the corner, dude. Just ask for those shorts and just tell different people you want that same pair of shorts in a different color. <laughs> it's a and great idea. And just give idea. different colors to other people. Yeah. And then you'll have 10 of those shorts and then you'll never, maybe even buy two of those, the same color. And then you can just swap them out so you never have to stop wearing them. That's It'll a be smart. Clean. That's a Steve Jobs. That's what's genius. That's smart. Just have right. the outfit that you like. Don't waste brain power on it. Obama would take his suit. Because, you know, the president's got to wear a lot of suits. Once he was done wearing it, put it to the back of the closet and just go, boom. Just cycle through. Run it down the line. Boom, boom, boom. Smart. Chris, who's your beef of the week? Uh, my beef of the week is the heat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking take it easy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hot. Uh, it's been really hot. Yeah, it's really hot. It's just you don't really want to do stuff, which I'm cool with. But I still like knowing that I have the option. And then I choose to not do anything. But now I don't even have that choice. I'm just not doing anything because to go outside, I feel like I'll die. So I don't go outside. But also, you know, I feel guilty running the AC all the time because, you know, the grid's overstressed. So just fucking chill out. Seriously, dude. Well said. Dude, my beef of the week is with um, actors who have voices that don't make sense for how they were raised. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. I, uh, I'm a huge John Berthnall fan. I think he's a tremendous actor and he acts in a lot of stuff and he's always good and he, he's fucking good fucking actor, man. He had Shia LaBeouf on his podcast to talk about all of his crazy indiscretion shit. And like, you know, that might have been, I don't know. But like, Starts off and shouts like, hey, brother, I just want to thank you for, you know, giving me a space where I can, like, talk about, like, you know, my shit, man. Because, like, there's not a, lot of, not a lot of spaces to talk about that. But, like, hey, man, you do, like, an intro, right? And then John Berthon, I was, like, he's wearing, like, a sideways cap. He's like, hey, hey man, like, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to do, we do this thing, like, how it goes. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, Shia LaBeouf's from Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's from <laughs> Los <laughs> Angeles. And then John Berthnall went to Sidwell, which is this high school in D.C. where like Joe Biden's kids went. It's like where politicians could go. And then he went to Moscow acting school like in Russia. And I'm like, where the fuck did you two guys pick up these voices, dude? Like it's totally I, I think what it is, is that acting is very Paul Newman talks about this in his new doc about uh, or like is quoted. It's like a very non masculine profession, but they play these masculine dudes. So they like I think they overcorrect a little bit and just develop these like gravelly voices that I'm just like, but like, and Jeff Bridges is like the ultimate example. He's like from LA and he talks like he was like, you know, from wherever hell or high water took place. And I'm just like, (laughs) I'm like, dudes, you're amazing actors. I guess if it helps you get there, you get there. But like, I just know like, cause dude, we saw Shia LaBeouf and even Stevens. Like I know what you sound like normally. And I just know there's like casting tapes of John Berthnall from when he's like, 19 being like hi john berthnall auditioning for the the part of hamlet and then yeah. like but now after like 30 years of being like a badass he's like hey man like you know like i know you're a cop man so being a cop like you gotta like trust your brothers when you're a cop right i'm like what well, you're an actor dude <laughs> exactly uh, dude it's gonna be what's gonna be um all right uh chad who's your babe of the week uh my babe of the week is my electric fly swatter. Do you guys have one of these? Yeah. Dude, it's the best feeling. So basically, it's in the shape of like a tennis racket, a small tennis racket. It's electric, though. So you, when you swat a fly, if you catch it right, it zaps it. It's the most satisfying thing. Sounds nice. I've ever done. I got zero kills. You got zero kills? Dude. Yeah. Maybe my wife's need... got like a dozen. What? Oh, I was going to say, maybe you maybe need a new racket, but what's, what's going on here? I don't know. 
Yeah, I well, I just I missed. Uh, I was now I'm just gun shy because I missed a couple times. Right, and then oh. I was like, I'm not getting anything. Baby, Fuck keep this swinging. You, you know what you can do to boost your confidence is sometimes they get into the uh, screen in the window, and you just trap it, and they'll just fly in, and they'll get stuck, and then you just keep it going until it oh. starts smoking. You know, <laughs> that's how brutal I am with these flies. <laughs> Might need to come yeah. over and do that. Dude, I don't have screens, but, but dude, that I've had, sounds twisted. I had one. I had <laughs> one in front of my girlfriend. I had one in front of my girlfriend. The fly goes by me like this. I do the underhand. Badass. Oh. And then I got one the other night where I did an overhand, overhand, and then I caught it and then just held it in there and it was in it. You know, dude. just fucking roasted it. Nice, dude. Strider, who's your baby of the week? Dude, my baby of the week's got to be my freaking <coughs> dank ass fiance, dude. She's been, uh, and I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this, but she's been doing it now. She's got a little bit of a green thumb, and she's really been crushing it with our house plants lately. And she's planted Illinois wildflowers as well as California wildflowers, both of our states, and um, very, very dank. And they're sprouting up and starting to come. Uh, but like you said, the fucking heat has been brutal on them, so she's moving them inside. But just the discipline that she's had to exhibit to do this, really impressive shit. Um, yeah, dude. And I just kind of freaking game. So nice, yeah, dude. So, that's awesome. It's yeah. a good combo. Chris, who's your baby of the week? My baby of the week is uh the actress that portrays Galadriel in Ring of Power, the new Lord of the Rings show. <laughs> Morfin Clark. She's all over the pilot, which is the only episode that I've seen thus far. I haven't watched the second one that's out. And it's really big shoes to fill. Kate Blanchett originated the character in the uh, in the trilogy, and obviously she's like one of the best ever. So, but this lady's doing a good job, and she's super badass. And it's just I really enjoyed that first hour, so I'm really excited to keep watching. Nice, dude. yeah, it's sick, dude. Uh, my baby of the week is um, Vin Diesel. We were at a um, wedding on Saturday for uh, Jordana Brewster, guest of the pod, friend, and uh, our our dear friend Mason Moffat. They got married congrats it was a wonderful marriage what a wonderful awesome. ceremony wonderful party we really got after it vin diesel's there um looking good just in a v-neck and uh <laughs> and uh he was he was at his table with like uh like ludicrous and then um me and chad were pretty jacked up on mushrooms and we were powwowing and we were like hey like we got to say something to vin right we got to talk to vin we got to talk to vin should we do it should we do it let's do it let's do it so we just bum rush him and we came in I had a lot of manic intensity and it was all, I got the video of it. Uh, my girlfriend filmed us talking to him and I just went up to him and I went, Vin, what up dude? Hey man, I don't want to bother you, but it would be a huge honor if I could get a photo with you. And then he just went, uh huh. And then I went, thank you dude. And then we got down there, took the photo. My eyes were like this big <laughs> and I was so happy. And I was like, ah, took the photo. I was so stoked. I almost forgot to say thank you. I just started walking away. Chad, you were nice. You were like, thank you, Vin. I turned around. I was like, thank you, Vin. Thank you. And then we ran back to our table with this prized possession, this photo of a guy that we've, you know, admired and watched for decades. And um, I think me and Chad texted each other 32 times over the next two days just saying, what a photo. Um, <laughs> it's really good. Bro, it was it's so good. Dude, it, your eyes in it are so fucking funny. Oh, my God, just, dude. I was so pumped. And it Chad's was, eye. It was yeah. so nice of him. <laughs> yeah, it almost if it would have been both of our eyes, it might have been too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I think just mine just popping in like, dude, I'm in here. <laughs> it was uh it was pretty incredible. And it was really nice of him to take the photo and then uh he kind of disappeared after the picture. Probably just to take a breather. <laughs> but uh thank you, Vin, for letting us take the photo and keep up the good work, man. Really appreciate it. Um, Chad, who's your legend of the week? Oh well, dude, I'm glad you brought that up because my legend is is you for getting that for not nailing down that photo because we were you know i was i was on mushrooms too just sort of staring at him i was talking like candy and you guys i'm like when are we gonna do it when are we gonna get this photo and he's just out there and he's just <laughs> and then we just went and did it dude. Yeah, we just, <laughs> we just rushed him <laughs> he looks in the photo He's just so just like he's so held I don't hostage. Want to be taking this dude. Yeah, yeah. He's like, please, this is what I definitely did not want. <laughs> yeah, oh man, sorry, dude. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that was rad. 
Yeah, yeah it's so funny, dude. But he he's <sighs> a legend, yeah. Total ledge. Strider, he's your legend of the week. Dude, maybe my, my legend's got to be uh, Mason and Jordana, dude. Tying the knot, getting married, dude. Super sweet vows, dude. Bringing the fams together. So, Very sweet. congrats, man. And thanks for having us. It was a freaking epic rager and, and wishing you guys all the best. So rad. Dude, they brought me to tears. Yeah, yeah, dude. Watching beautiful. Yeah. Both of them walk down the aisle with their kids. Oh, it's just really pretty, man. Oh, that's beautiful. a beautiful nice. thing. Yeah. It was, it was Speeches really nice. were so good. The, his buddy who plays the music. Dude, that guy's a that Played guy's it a at legend, his birthday. Dude. That guy fucking crushes it. Dude, we were doing a tequila shot. Me and Chad, he comes up. He goes, got one more. I go, let's go, dude. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Just comes in and just Wait, hops on train. When you say he plays... Dude, he plays guitar and sings. Dude, he's unbelievably talented. Oh, he he nice. played the ceremony. He did like a Stapleton song. He did like a Randall Montaigne song. And like his voice like matched perfectly. Nice. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah, he crushed it. Was it band or DJ for the reception? Band. Good band. I, dude, I swear I recognize these bands at this point. Yeah. They're always like 12-piece bands. You know, they got like five singers or something yeah. like that. They always look like they're like best friends. One of my favorite things to do at a wedding is stand close to the stage and just vibe with the singers. Oh, nice. Try to give them some energy. Did Yeah, the, uh, the band was amazing. We had them do the encore. Mm -hmm. Like encore, come on, come on. They did Blank Space, right, by T Swift. Yes, that's yeah. what they did. It banged. That's great. Oh, that's Chris, awesome. who's your legend? Uh, my legend is our. Uh, it's another twofer. I'm going Chad and JT, dude. Let's oh, go. Oh, thanks, dude. Dude, show rocks. So fun to see you guys. Thank you, dude. Thank Crushed you, it. Uh, such a fun watch, dude. So happy for you guys, and yeah, it kicked ass. Thanks so much, dude. dude thank you, thank you, dude. Thanks um, a lot. Yeah, my legend of the week was gonna be uh, Mason and Jordan too. I'll mix it up though. I'll go Strider because he hasn't gotten a legend out of this oh, grouping yet. Dude, Strider, total you. legend, dude. Just a rock, man. We're at the wedding. Before we go to the wedding, you and me hit a CrossFit workout. Let's go at One the arm bandit. at the Santa Barbara Twenty Four Hour Fitness. Dude comes in and is rude to the guy who works there. Oh, yeah. Strider just turns to the guy and goes hey man that guy was a dick that wasn't cool okay so and then the guy who worked at 24 hour fitness was so stoked he was like yeah thanks man like that guy was kind of a dick huh and then we kind of like bantered about him lightly making fun of him for not being funny and then when we're at the wedding and everyone's leaving valet's like trouble you know what i mean every all the cars are jammed it's taking everybody forever to get out people are being a little testy strider goes straight up to the valet guys he's like hey you guys are doing a great job thanks for everything and dude, my girlfriend pointed out, she's like, look at the way he's standing. You were like in command of the environment, dude. And we needed it. That is my environment, dude. It. I could have ran it. that driveway efficiently. Thank you, dude. Dude, the way you walked in with your <laughs> suit. The way, do you see the way he walked into the way? No. It, he had a power pose where he, he just, you look like a presidential. Dude, he came in you. shoulders up, you know, just he was wide, shades on, just Ready to with do. with your fiance, you know, just that's how I was feeling good. You made a statement, and it and at that wedding there were a lot of you know important people there, and you you fucking nailed that entrance. You were at MIP. Thank you. You stood out. Yeah. yeah, legends, bro. And then, dude, you know, we did a little shroomies today. Did a little bit, dude. That was so yeah, nice, I did a lot. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude you guys... your face in the morning. I come up because our rooms were next to each other. I come out in the morning. Yeah. It's like nine in the morning. And Chad's just out there like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't think you'd moved in like two hours. You yeah, you're like, like did you stay up all day? Yeah. I was like, I slept did you? like two hours. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Did you guys get a pick of you, get, of you three in your suits? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we yeah, did. yeah we got oh, oh, yeah, we got one mace. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Gotta see that. I'll show it to you. Because oh, yeah. the sure. only outfits I saw were like... You guys were you guys weren't fully dressed up. You guys had lost the jackets by then. Right. That's the one and that if you I look have. that good in your suit, I gotta see this. Oh, dude, he, the, his walk-in was. I'll, I'll remember that forever. Power pro, love that. You Chat. gotta do that at your wedding, dude. Yeah. Hundred percent, just fucking cruise. Yeah. Chat. What's your quote of the week? Uh, my quote of the week comes from Jim's dad, American Pie. Uh, he's talking to his son about masturbating. You know, I used to call it stroking the salami. Yeah, you know, pounding the old pud. And I never did it with baked goods, but, you know, your Uncle Mort, he pets the one I'd snake five, six times a day. Now, uh, do you know what a clitoris is? <laughs> That's it. Dude, uh, my quote of the week is, um, all of these candles have feelings, and it makes me want to cry. 
That's Chad Kroger at the wedding, dude, on shrooms. <laughs> that was really yeah, it was amazing, I felt dude. bad because yeah. some burnt more than the other. Some melted quicker than the others. I was like, dude, it's not competition. You're like, just <laughs> chill, guys. I guess, you know, that's a nice aesthetic, though, you know? Right. Whenever you think about, like, a storybook, it's like they're all at different levels. Dude, good call. Good call. Chris, what's your quote of the week? Uh, I'll do it. I already did it earlier, but give me back my son. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> mine is Paul Newman from his new doc. Dude, so we've just perceived Paul Newman as just being the man. But when he was younger, he was like an incredibly self-aware, but like insecure and kind of like struggling dude. And uh, he had all these journals that he kept. And he's really profound. And I like this one. He says, my problem is that I just remember an accumulation of events. I don't really have a sense of a beginning there are people who have a sense of living a whole life, but I just have a sense of a series of events attached together in random ways. Stick the middle in the beginning or the beginning in the middle. It really doesn't seem to, have, it really doesn't seem to make either sense or difference. I was like, whoa, dude. Paul's got some feelings, man. Yeah. Chet, what's your phrase of the week for getting after it? Uh, my phrase of the week for getting after it is... Uh... What are you doing with a gun in space? Nice. <laughs> Strider. Sigh. Anara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and then it's not an actual phrase, but just something to get you fired up, dude. If you make eyes with one of your boys, dude, and then you just give a subtle head nod. You know, nice. like almost imperceptible. Like we say, like let's go with just a little your eyes. And That's just a very nod. strong. That's very very strong, dude. Uh, mine is uh, just one word. Familia. Nice, boom, baby. That's awesome, dude. Good draft, dudes. Good draft. Good draft, fellas. Good shit. Stokers. Thanks, boys. Thanks for listening. Legends. If you need advice, these guys are really nice.